Hi and welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I'm really excited to be back in the kitchen and showing you how to cook a traditional Sunday roast. I asked the question whether you'd like chicken or beef and the answer was beef, which I'm very excited about because I love beef too. So please remember to hit the subscribe button to ring the bell to be notified of my weekly videos. The more the merrier, spread the word and um, yes, let's get cooking. So I just wanted to let you know that all of these recipes are available to buy on my website and for one week only I am doing a special discount for you guys on all of my digital recipes on there. So make the most of it because this offer is only going to be out there for one week but I wanted to um, yeah, give you the recipes so you can go and do it in full and have the confidence to cook a beautiful Sunday roast and lots of other things as well on there. Afternoon tea, family favourites, curry, you name it, they're there. So go and take a look. I have moved the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got a small oven tray with a piece of Baco Glide and I have got some onion chopped up just um, you know, relatively roughly, and some celery. You probably want to trim what else I'm doing, some carrots. In fact, that one is a little bit fat, so I'm gonna take that out and just put them in there like so. You can use which, whatever veg you have got um, for this. And then I have got my piece of beef from the butchers. So we use our local butcher here in Pilbara, suitors and they are just brilliant so they have carefully prepared this i'm trying just going to see a minute i'm going to get my hands in salt and pepper so i want to keep them clean pop that to one side so i've got some salt here and i'm just going to sprinkle that over the fat on the top of the beef this is malden sea salt which is a favorite of mine this or pink himalayan i use um 99% of the time. And then some black pepper over the top too. Now that is ready to go in the oven. It's sitting, you can touch it now, it's sitting on the veg as much as possible and that just lifts it off the bottom of the tray but this is also the base for my gravy. My beef is not straight from the fridge. I took it out about half an hour ago to bring it up to um, as close to room temperature as possible. So I want you to think if a piece of meat, any meat has come straight from the fridge, it's tight, it's cold, the muscles are tense like that. When it comes out and it's back up to almost room temperature, you don't want, you've gotta be careful with meat for it sitting out for too long the muscles start to relax and so that is going into the oven as a relaxed piece of meat. And it's also really important why you rest it at the end because again in the oven it gets tense, it gets hot. When it comes out of the oven and you rest it before you carve it, the muscles relax and the juices can flow out and then your meat is less likely to be tough. So that is really, really critical with meat to rest it properly. So my beef is now ready to go in the oven. I'm using my arga for this and I'm putting it in the roasting oven for the first 30 minutes. So you want that in a hot oven, about 200, um, 200 degrees Celsius, um, that sort of temperature. And I've moved the rack down because I'm going to put it in the bottom. I want the fat side up. I want it to stand like that. So in it goes, I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes and then I will reduce the temperature. I'm going to show you how to make Yorkshire pudding. So it's measured in cups, it keeps it easy. So you can, if you've got extra people, you can use a bigger cup or you can use a smaller cup depending on how many. So one cup of plain flour, half a cup of water. It's quite important as well to make your batter early on. So once you've got the beef in the oven, make it and then leave it to rest and half a cup of milk. I'm using full fat, but it doesn't matter. You can use either. And then half a cup of eggs. I know that that's about three eggs. You can measure them out, but actually I'm just going to pop my eggs in. I'm using three of my eggs. Um, they are a bit smaller. So it just, it just depends slightly on the size of your eggs in 
Okay. Oh, there's a bit of hay on that one. And then a pinch of sea salt. So back with my Maldens. And actually I didn't get a particularly good pinch there, so I'm going in for a little bit more. And then the hand blender. You can use a whisk, but actually I find it quicker and easier with a hand blender. This one is Kenwood and it works really well, so I'm gonna make a bit of noise and whiz this all up. <laughs> going to quickly run a spoon around the edge and just make sure I've got all those bits of flour off the bottom and then I'm going to just leave it over there to rest for a little bit um, in a warm place and I find if you leave it to rest your Yorkshires are likely to rise better than if you were to uh, just do it quickly before so that's why I do it in advance. And I'm just gonna leave it on the alga there until I'm ready to pop it in the oven. I have put the potatoes to boil here for eight minutes. So I'm gonna set Alexa. Alexa, set a timer for eight minutes, please. Second timer, eight minutes. Now it's really, it's really important that you put cold water in with potatoes. So any veg that has grown underground, so potatoes, carrots, things like that, always put in cold water and bring to the boil. Anything like peas, um, broccoli, things like that, you can put warmer, hotter water in. Sorry, that is Penny being very noisy outside. So I'm gonna bring these to the boil and then show you what I do next. While my potatoes are coming to the boil, I'm just going to start preparing my other veg. So I've got parsnips and carrots and I'm just going to peel and chop those. And then I'm going to actually roast them with a honey glaze and they are really, really scrummy like that. So um, we'll just peel all of these. I've just strained the water off the potatoes and I'm just going to give them a little bit of a shake to fluff them up. I've got another tray lined with Baco Glide and I'm just going to pour them onto that. Now I'm not cooking masses of veg um, today but um, if I were you could use a bigger tray. I'm going to use a spoon of um, I probably won't use the whole spoon because I don't have massive potatoes, but a sprinkling of just plain flour like that, and then um, rapeseed oil and some sea salt. And I'm just going to pop that over there and I'm going to just um, toss those potatoes and make sure that all the flour is soaked up by the rapeseed oil. Just like that. You just don't want to see bits of flour. Um, if you need to put a little bit more oil on, you can. I personally don't like my potatoes swimming in oil, so that to me is pretty perfect. And I'm going to put them in the roasting oven. Now the timer has also gone off for the beef, so that is 30 minutes it's had in there. So I'm going to drop it down now. Let me show you looking great. I'm going to drop it down now into the baking oven. So that is probably about 160 and I'm going to put these in the roasting oven. I'm going to stir them up at the top like that. And remember I've talked to you before about the arga. The top of the arga is, um, works as like a grill, the bottom works like a frying pan. So if I'm going to get them crispy on top and then I can drop them down and get them crispy on the bottom. 
Now for my parsnips and carrots. My recipe in the bundle is actually just for parsnips, but I've decided today I'm gonna to add carrots in as well. Now, when I was, um, when the children were tiny, when they were babies, I would always cook extra veg and I wouldn't add any salt to the water. And then I could puree it for when I was weaning them and freeze it in ice cube trays. There's, um, I don't want that in there. Um, and yeah, so extra veg is a really good idea. Or you can make soups with it, leftovers, whatever to have during the week. So I am going to put a bit of sea salt, but if you're cooking for tiny, small children, babies, then don't put the salt in. And I'm going to boil this for five minutes. So again, I've got cold water because they're root vegetables and I'm just going to put the lid on. I've actually just used the saucepan that I cook the potatoes in. It saves on washing up. And it is important when you're cooking a roast to wash up as you go along, otherwise you just end up with mountains. My carrots and parsnips have boiled for five minutes and I have strained the water off and I've kept some of it in this jug here. So vegetable water is brilliant stock, so don't throw it away because we're going to be using this later. I don't keep the potato water, but veg, parsnips, carrots, broccoli, peas, that sort of thing, I always keep the water for making soups and um, things like that. So I'm just going to let these steam off and dry a little bit before I um, yeah, coat them in honey and flour and make them delicious and yummy. So those have just steam dried a little bit and I'm going to pop them in another tray. This has got a really old piece of Baker Glide in there, so it's much darker than the others, but it works just as well. And I'm going to pop some plain flour over these, like that. It's probably enough. Some honey. This is honey from Dan and Devon. Drizzle that over. And then some sunflower oil or some vegetable oil. Just, just pour a little bit on the spoon. Pour that over. And a knob of butter in that goes. And a pinch of salt. And I'm just going to mix that all together and then roast them. Just toss those. And then, and again, you want all the flour to disappear. You don't want to see that <laughs> shot out. So just make sure they're all on it. Penny is running around all over the place. <laughs> she can get her little feet. So that has all melted. The butter's melted. They smell delicious. And I am going to roast these. And at the same time as I put these in the oven, I'm going to check my potatoes and I will poss possibly move them or just um, turn them. You want to try and keep, when you're cooking on an auger, to keep the doors closed as much as possible. So if you're opening it for a reason, then do other things that you need to do at the same time. So I'm gonna do that now. Get that to turn my potatoes. I love a cheesy white sauce with my broccoli and with my Sunday roast. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to make a white sauce. They are really, really easy to make. Lots of people get scared by white sauces, but honestly, it really is easy. So just melt a good sized knob of butter. It can be salted or unsalted. It can be your preference. I need to grab a spoon. So when that has all melted, you add in some plain flour. I think we can go with that now. So this is important, this part, to get the right consistency. So you want the butter to absorb all of that flour. 
and you don't want to have it really runny you want to have it to like that sort of consistency and that is perfect and you need to cook it for a moment probably a minute or so and I actually then season it now with some black pepper and a little pinch of sea salt in there and just stir it as the flour is cooking. Now I've got my vegetable water to hand because you, you can just use milk but I'm going to use a combination of vegetable water and milk and then cheese. You can use Gruyere, you can use cheddar, you can add a bit of Parmesan, really whatever you've got to hand. I think a cheesy white sauce though is really, really delicious, so I do add the cheese. Now I think that flour has cooked for long enough and I'm gonna start adding my liquid. It's important that you, sorry, you probably didn't hear me, and Penny's barking, which doesn't help. It's important that you add the liquid slowly. Penny is quite out of sorts at the moment because of her puppies. So she is being a little bit noisier than normal. So that has all been absorbed. So I'm just going to add a little bit more in. And now I'm just going to whip over to the fridge and get some milk and start adding that in too. So that is all absorbed again. And now it's time to add a little bit of milk. You could just use water and cheese. It's absolutely fine. It's really personal preference. But I think um, it's not quite as rich if you add a little bit of vegetable water. And it's got the goodness from the vegetables as well, which I think, particularly at this time of year, it's really important to boost our immune system. So as much veg and goodness as you can get into your cooking is really important. So we just wait until that thickens up slightly and then we can add more milk. Now the best thing about white sauces is you can freeze them. So if you make too much, it's not a problem. Pop it in a pot, label it and put it in the freezer and you can use it for a following Sunday and it saves time. And yeah, you can even use it in lasagna. It's a basis of a lot of sauces. Now I have just roughly chopped some cheddar. To be honest, you could grate it, but save washing up another thing, your grater. I've just chopped it into chunks because it's going to go in there and it's going to melt. So it doesn't matter if it's grated or not. And to be honest, any extra washing up I will avoid if possible. So I'm just going to stir that in. And then you'll need to add probably some more milk or some more water as you go, as it thickens. thickening really nicely so I'm going to add a touch of water and then you could just put this to one side until you're ready to heat it up and serve it you just pop it on the back of the aga and then finish it off add a little bit more milk or whatever the cheese will melt so I'm literally now going to pop that over there out of the way put my vegetable water over here because I need that again later and leave that just to rest there. I've just taken the beef out of the oven to drain off some of the fat into a pudding bowl. So I'm just, I'm just gonna hold the beef a little bit. Sometimes you need somebody to help you do this if you've got a really big joint. I'm just gonna tip the juices into this pudding bowl. Like so. And then the beef can go back into the oven for the rest of the cooking time. I just need to slightly rearrange it on its baker glide. Like so, I'm gonna pop that back in and then get going with the Yorkshire pudding, which I have got here. So I've got a muffin tray. You can either do it like this in individuals or the size of my small roasting trays work really well for this amount of batter and I'm just going to spoon some fat into each 
of these. You don't want masses, but it stops it sticking and it adds to the flavor. So a little bit in each bit. Now, if you were doing it in one big one, I'd probably use two spoonfuls and heat it up. It's really important that you get the fat piping, piping hot. You can use oil, but I think the flavor with the fat is actually much better. And with Sunday roast, it is all about flavor. So I'm just gonna swish that around and I'm going to put it in my auger up there. I've moved the potatoes and the carrots down. And I'm gonna leave that in there for a moment to heat up and then I should pour the batter in. That is now hot. And again, I just want to swirl it around a bit just to make sure that you have got the oil around the sides as much as you can because otherwise your Yorkshires will stick. And pour in the batter. Now you might um, need to use an electric oven. Sometimes if I'm cooking a lot, I will put my electric on as well for the Yorkshires because you want to make sure that they go into a really hot oven and you can drop temperature in your auger. But you know your auger, so these need to go into a hot oven to crisp up and rise beautifully. So I'm just gonna add some butter into those slightly small ones. I don't think you can ever have enough Yorkshire puddings actually for my, my lot. I do two trays, I do this and I do a flat one as well. They are spoilt, but leftover Yorkshire puddings are terribly good too. So in they go into that hot oven there. My meat has had all of its cooking time, so I've just taken it out of its tray onto the chopping board. And I'm just gonna put some tin foil over it like that and leave it to rest. A meat thermometer is a terribly good idea if you're unsure of um, whether it's cooked through properly. Beef, it can be on the rare side. Lamb can be on the rare side. Pork and chicken, it's really important it's cooked properly. So a meat thermometer, if you're unsure, is really, really handy. This one is from Lakeland. It's digital and it's super easy to use. So I have got my cooking tray here and I'm not gonna wash it up. This is actually where I'm going to make my gravy. It's not too hot to touch. I am going to pour the rest of the fat into this bowl that I used for my Yorkshire pudding, this bowl of fat. Pour all of that into here, like so. Keep that to one side. And then I'm just gonna let it settle for a moment. In fact, it's already, already done it. I'm gonna spoon off the fat. So it separates and the fat, there's not actually much fat in here. I use most of the fat for the Yorkshire. Just carefully spoon off. I've got a little bit of the meat juice in there as well. Spoon it off like so. You can use all sorts of gadgets to do this, but actually I find a spoon works really well. Now that fat, I actually keep. I pop it in the fridge and I use it for all sorts of things. Um, beef drippings is what it's known as. But this, in it, this bowl is the base of your gravy, which is so important. It makes it really delicious and adds to the flavor. So, but you don't want too much fat in your gravy, so it is important to separate it as much as you possibly can. Like so. And then I'm gonna pour that in there and leave it until I'm ready to make my gravy, which I do just, I actually do the gravy while size carving. We work well as a team. He's got his jobs and I've got my jobs, but I'm just gonna leave that there for a mo. So I love steaming veg as much as possible and I have got my steamer here, a little bit of water in the bottom and my purple sprouting on top. And I'm just gonna cook this. I don't want to overcook it. Probably between five and 10 minutes. 
I've also got my dishes out here, so serving bowls, grain boat, and plates to warm, which is quite important. Um, have nice warm dishes to put your um, veg and when you're serving, particularly because it can take a while to plate up if you've got more, you know, friends as well over. It can take a little while, so nice warm plates keep your food warm. And here are my Yorkshires, which I'm very pleased with. I'm just gonna pop them into the warming oven to keep them warm until everything else is ready. I've also got down here my potatoes and my parsnips and carrots. They're warming as well, but I can put those in the serving bowls now and I should put those in as well and then show you how to make gravy. My broccoli is done, so I'm going to bring my steamer over and strain the water. It's really important that you don't just take it off the heat and leave it because it will continue cooking. You can see the steam coming off. It will continue cooking if you leave that water in below it. So I'm just going to pop that down there for a moment and pour this water into another jug that I've got just here, which you can't see at the moment, but it's there like that. I'm now actually going to put my broccoli straight into a serving bowl. It's there, that I've warmed up here. I'm just going to pour that straight in there like that and move my steamer to one side. I'm going to cover that with tin foil, but I don't cover the potatoes with tin foil because I find that they go soggy and mushy so I just leave them in the warming oven or just leave them on the side um, and then just warm them back up but don't put tin foil on those. Now for my gravy I have got my roasting tray that I cook the beef in and the vegetables they can stay in there and then all of the juices from the meat bar the fat I scoop that off. Some of you are going to hate me for this, but I do use Bisto gravy. I use the powder, not the granules. And let me show you how I use it. I just sprinkle some in like that into there. I'm going to use this and an oven glove because it will get hot just to mix that in. I might add a little bit more Bisto. I personally don't like a thick, floury, gloopy gravy. I prefer um, a more liquidy one. So that is what I'm going to show you today. Now this I think is really clever. A girlfriend showed it to me, gosh, many years ago, pre-children, that you can clean your oven tray while you're making your gravy. And that's what I do. And all of those lovely sort of burnty bits in there add to the flavour. So you're literally cleaning your tray. You can take your bacon glide out, but it's fine. I'm going to add a little bit more Bisto powder in there. You can use, if you want it thicker, you can use some corn flour to thicken it up. Absolutely, but I personally don't like it um, too gloopy. I've now got my vegetable waters. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the broccoli one and that one is the carrot and parsnip. If I added just the broccoli, it would be quite strong. So you need to just be a little bit mindful of that. And that is the telephone. So I'm just gonna put you on pause for a minute and answer that. So I am just gonna give that a little bit more of a stir. It's slightly gently boiling on there. I'm gonna add a little bit of red wine now. that amount and some red currant jelly you I also use um, if I don't have red currant to hand I use some of my quince so I'm going to use um, two teaspoons of red currant in there and just stir that and then it's a bit of tasting, seeing whether it needs more red currant, more water, more of your vegetable water. I'm just going to let the red currant melt and then I'm going to bring it to the boil and it will reduce from being on a higher heat. And then I shall taste it and see what it needs. But the vegetables you see that I cooked under the beef are all adding to the flavour as well. So it's, you know, works really well.
So I've just put my white sauce on to the heat just to warm through and I'm just going to add a little bit more vegetable water because it's got quite thick. And then I'm actually going to add that vegetable water to that. Um, and show you what I do with the gravy. Right, my meat has been resting here and I'm just going to take the tin foil off. Now lots of juices have come out as that muscle has relaxed. So I'm going to carefully pour that without it going everywhere into the gravy and then just heat that through again quickly just to cook with those extra added juices in there. So that's just going to go back on to boil quickly and then I strain it. Right, that gravy has now heated through and I've just stupidly dropped my spatula in there. And I'm just going to pour it through the sieve into the jug like that. You could pour this into a saucepan and then if you've got additional gravy you can just warm it up before you serve, but we are ready to serve apart from the carving, which won't take me a moment. So I'm just gonna let that drip through and then pop it into a gravy boat. My white sauce is perfect, so that is coming off the heat. And let's carve. So it's important to cut the string off and just remove that. So get that out like so and then to sharpen my knife I've got a steel not an expert at this but um, it is important to have a sharp knife for the job and then I'm going to turn it up like that and carve downwards I think beef should be carved in nice thin slices, so that is what I'm going to attempt to do. Penny can smell the beef and you can hear her pitter patter of feet thinking that she might be in for a treat. So we shall carve this, I'm going to spin it round to show you. And so your guests that prefer it more well done can have the end bits and the guests or family members, whoever you are cooking your Sunday roast for, can have the more bits in the middle is what I'm trying to say that's not as well cooked. And that's a great thing. The great thing also about roast beef is you can have sandwiches, you can have salad, you can have it with jacket potatoes, you can make it into a spicy Asian salad. So if you actually get a bigger joint, you can enjoy it for a good few days afterwards. And Penny is, <laughs> she knows what's going on. She's very clever, sniffing around, hoping that she might be in for a treat. I do hope you've enjoyed my how to cook Sunday roast video. Remember that all the recipes from today are available on my website for a discounted price for one week only. It also includes homemade horseradish, I think horseradish is essential with roast beef, and a pudding recipe as well. All my digital recipes are available for a discount for this week only. Have a fabulous weekend, thank you for tuning in and I will catch you again next week.